I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable. I'm a beatable. From the inside store, every time they wanna clash, the winners kicking through the door. I am a beatable. Chances running out of stock, and we're running out the clock. I bail once, never stop. I am a beatable. I am a beatable. We are the British Basketball League and we have one more game of round two to bring you and it promises to be an absolute cracker. It's the Cheshire Phoenix against the B. Braun Sheffield Sharks. The Phoenix had an incredible win on the road at Leicester last week. So who better to break this down for you than Riders head coach Rob Paternostro. He's alongside Josh Bett. You can take it away, fellas. Well, thank you so much, Jeanette, and welcome, Basel fans, to this British Basel League fixture between the Cheshire Phoenix and the Sheffield Sharks. Well, I'm your commentator, Josh Ben, alongside head coach of the Leicester Riders, Rob Paternostra. Coach, this is going to be an exciting encounter between these two teams. Oh, yeah, two different results for these teams last week. Cheshire, obviously, with the big win, but both teams fired away from the three-point line. 39 attempts from Cheshire, 30 from Sheffield. Sheffield only made six, Cheshire made 18, so let's see who can shoot the ball from the perimeter today. Well, we're going to take a look at the starting lineups now here for the Cheshire Phoenix. Now, big talk, of course, is coming with Arian Wright making the jump, of course, from the NBL. But again, you got the likes of Rideau and Holden. This looks like a very strong Cheshire team, coach. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they have White from the perimeter, the five man who stretches the floor. But then you have those athletic rebounding guards that can really keep the ball alive for them and give them extra possessions. Well, the Sharks opening game was on the road against the Newcastle Eagles. Now you can see Devoe Ramsey coming back into the lineup. Bennett Cook as well, the big man. We have Jordan Retino, but Pipkins and Allen will have a big say in this game. And no doubt the Sharks looking for a big response. Yeah, with the Sharks, Cook is in the starting lineup. He wasn't in there last week. And I think they're going to go to him early to see if he can go at Skylar White. Now, what do we make of this superstar now coming to the British Basketball League, Coach? Yeah, you know, again, played it in the second division last year. The Dartmouth grad, he's a nightmare matchup. He can handle the ball. He can back you down, do a lot of things on offensive end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back as we go for a momentary break. Welcome back, Basel fans. The British Basel League fixture between Cheshire Phoenix and Sheffield Sharks is about to get underway. Kate Unsworth, Matthew Lloyd, and John Paul Pearson are three officials for tonight's game. Well, the Phoenix will be getting the first possession here of this game. Trying to make sure they get into their sets early. Now, Coach, i got to ask you, this team shot the lights out, unfortunately, when they had you in their opening game against the Leicester Riders. Oh, yeah. You know, you got to have your coverages right. Whenever you play against a five-man like Skylar White that can stretch the floor, it gives a challenge to pick-and-roll defense. It'll be interesting to see how Sheffield cover that today. Well, the Phoenix, of course, winning the, B, the British Basketball League Trophy of 2021. Trying to go down low to right here, but an early turn. Well, no, they able to recover this one under a bit of pressure. But time winding down here on the shot clock. Well, has to force up a Hail Mary three from no man's land. Almost got it. Shock surviving now. But let's talk about Kipper Nichols, his return to the Sharks. That's got to be a massive form of inspiration for this team. Certainly a guy that Atiba Lions trust. 90 plus games in a Shark uniform. Over 1,000 points for them in the three seasons. So he should hit the ground running today for them. Well, Cook looking for the isolation. Got it by Scott White, but the triple team comes. And the jump ball is going to be cool between these two teams. Kind of like what you saw there from the Phoenix. A quick crash down against Bennett Cook. Yeah, well, that's what they do. They like to bring help from the baseline side at times. And you can see what uh, Coach Lyons wants to do with Sheffield. He wants to go at White in the post with Bennett. That time, Cheshire did a good job of really get ganging up on him to stop him. Atiba Lyons, a former Sheffield Sharks player, was about to head to go and play professional basketball in Israel before having a bit of a U-turn, then becoming the head coach of this fantastic franchise here in the British Basketball League joining in the 1994-95 season and actually winning 
the league in their very first ever year. Yeah, they've been a consistent playoff team over the years. Coach Lyons in his 16th season with the Sharks. So he's been there a long time. Uh, this is a team that he brought back a lot of players this year from last year's team. But he wants to be a little different this year, he said. They only average 16 attempts a game from three. Game one, they take 30. Oratino getting the ball inbound. Ramsey looking to attack here. Draws a bit of contact, goes up, and he will be going to the free throw line. But I'm oh, interested. Let's talk about the Sharks in that opening game against the Newcastle Eagles. Only six made three-point attempts made out of 30. I mean, that's a lot of three-pointers to take. Yeah, that was a, a problem with not being able to convert. And there you see with Ramsey, he's a guy at the end of the clock that can make a play. You know, Sook's one, quick guard, put the ball in his hands, and he can go by people, and that's what happened there. Well, the interesting thing about Devo Ramsey, a lot of people will remember VJ King, who played for the Bristol Flyers last season. But those two were actually teammates for the under-17 United States of America team at the 2014 FIBA World Cup in Dubai. Heavy hitters on that team, including Jason Tatum. So uh, devereux has been uh, a pl big-time player from an early age. Well, not a team able to get off the mark here in the opening minute. But Phoenix trying to settle into his one. Ryan looking to attack now, spinning around, going all the way. He draws a foul, he'll go to the free throw line. Well, interesting with the matchups from Coach Lyons, he puts uh, uh, Koch on Rye uh, to start the game, Bennett Cook on Rye to start the game, the five man, and he puts Retinho on Skyler White. So guarding Skyler White with a small and guarding Aaron Ray with a big. Well, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the British basketball landscape, and of course, many players do make the jump from the NBL to the British basketball league, but it's only been one game, and I don't mean to haunt you on this one, Coach, but he looks like he's going to be a fantastic talent in this league. Yeah, I think when you look at him, you don't know what position he really plays, but that's to his benefit in a way, because he can do so many different things. Really impressive in game one, handling the ball and making plays all over the court. Well, Pipkins now trying to get things going here for the Sharks. Huge elevation for this play. Turn it over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have something here. Transition, bit of contact, getting rejected. Oh, good solid rim protection by Pipkins. After making the turnover, Phoenix come up with a loose ball. Again, momentum needs to be key here. Holden coming off one screen from Skylar White. Makes the bounce pass, goes up, and again, finish it with no problem. And that's the problem with the pick and roll with White Bennett. Cook did not want to jump out there because he knew he had White on the perimeter. Holden able to go right to the basket for two. Well, a quick timeout has been called here by the Sheffield Sharks. The team of Lions, you know, a bit of an early timeout call by Coach Lions. Yeah, maybe unhappy with the coverage they just had on that play. Uh, I thought it was interesting. Rideau, tough night in uh, first game, only 13 minutes. So I'm jumping that passing lane to get the steal early. Well, head coach of the Cheshire Phoenix, Ben Thomas, a part of the traditional Ellesmere Port Catholic High School. I mean, that's a high school that has its roots ingrained in professional basketball when it was the Chester Jets and now the Cheshire Phoenix. But, you know, it's good to see people coming from within the academy, stepping up and not only being players, but also being coaches. Yeah, and a fan as well. I think it's documented that, you know, Coach Thomas was a fan in the stands for those glory days with those Cheshire Jets. And now he's able to be in charge. Uh, two trophies to his name as well, a cup trophy uh, and a uh, trophy uh, two, two seasons ago with 21-22. So Coach Thomas has watched success from the crowd and has been able to celebrate success on court with the Phoenix. Well, Tiva Lions, we mentioned a former player here in the British Basketball League, but, you know, has really been the face of this franchise. And those are big shoes to fill when you think about the likes of Jim Brandon, you know, the man who had his ingrained, you know, his roots in the NBA, but also Chris Finch, the current head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. But at the moment, Sharks still looking for their first field goal. Well, trying to run to that pick and roll sequence here with Bennett Cook. Finding Ramsey. Time winding down here on the shot clock. Sharks have to get something. Can they break down the tough defense? And again, a something out of nothing shot there, coached by Pipkins. Yeah, solid D, I thought, from uh, Cheshire there. But Pipkins able to hit that little floater off one foot. Well, the neutral fan will definitely like to see this game go right down to the wire. But judging by how the Phoenix played, this could go one way. But Sheffield need a good response after their game against the Newcastle Eagles to go for three in the corner. They're going to go an offensive foul here. Well, 
I'm going to let you assess that one, Coach. Yeah, good spacing there from Cheshire. They got a good look from Jack, who can knock down that corner three-point shot. But it looks like Sheffield did their homework and are blocking out these wing guards. That was something that surprised us in game one. You know, with Skyler White out on the perimeter far away, it brings your big guy away from the basket. So you've got to check down and block out those guards. Sheffield doing a decent job so far. Well, the Sharks currently with Aaron, Ramsey, Pipkins, Rotino, and Bennett Cook, Cook on the floor. Ramsey looking to attack now. Well, nice pass in the lane, finding Rotino, and again getting a wide open look there inside the paints. Well, that has to feel good for Rotino. Had a rough night, opening night, one for nine up at Newcastle, and that time got a nice dish and an easy two. Well, Phoenix with Rodeau in the backcourt. Again, a bit of a zealous offense there, making a poor pass, and you know, maybe it's the early moments of this game, but both teams just trying to get a feel for each other and try to get into their rhythm. Well, still in September here. I think everybody's trying to get a feel for each other. I think it's a difficult time to, you know, evaluate your team. You still don't really know too much about them. You'll find out soon enough. Well, they went for the double team, finds Ramsey on the baseline. The mid-range is up, but no good. Shock's getting an offensive board. Battling with the bigs, but another one there. Something Cheshire need to do is try to keep this very energetic Sheffield team off second chance points. Going for a tough three-point. The step back is good, and that's a tough one. Shoots that one right in the face. Off the defense. Nice stop there for the Sharks. Well, now you talk about his position, Coach, but how can you analyze Arian Wright? Yeah, he's tough. I think you see there, he can take, race the ball right up the floor. Really has good footwork when he attacks. Here you see Pipkins at the end of the clock. Second basket from him at the end of the clock. This time a step back three, but with Ray, you know, he is a tricky guy to guard. You know, you can you put a small on him, he'll take him in the post. You put a big on him, he has the quickness to go by. It'll be interesting to see how teams defend him going forward. Ramsey trying to put his hand in the cookie jar, contesting everything defensively. Oh, it's been an interesting jump for him to go straight from the NBA G League where he was with the Stockton Kings. You know, it, you know, in my mind, he definitely has been a huge impact for their backcourt since joining them last season. Yeah, well, Coach Lyons brought him back. I mean, that says enough. But you certainly like his aggressiveness, his energy, and his quickness out on the floor. And I think he can make an impact on both ends of the floor with that. As we mentioned, Sheffield Sharks joining the British Basketball League midway through the 90s. You know, winning multiple championships and trophies, but didn't win their first ever British Basketball League playoff championship in 2004 under head coach Richard, uh, sorry, Peter Scannabry, Richard being his hmm. brother, but, you know, a team that is very much accustomed to winning. Yeah, they're a team, you know, historically has been, you know, one of the one of the teams up at the top. I think their last trophy win was 15-16. I know about that one because oh, yeah. they got who, us. Who, who, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to ask you who they beat that game. <laughs> they got us in the 0-2 final. Um, so, you know, Coach Lyons put together this team looking to try to get back to finals and try to put himself in the mix and certainly has a lot to say early to the referees. <laughs> this is a long delay. Just with the team of Lyons because, you know, he was one hell of a competitor. You know, you coached against him. But, you know, as, as, that, you know, as very passionate as he is, he's actually one of the nicest guys you'll ever speak to. Well, there's a the penetration now. Find it wide in the corner. Three is up. It just rattles its way in and out. Ramsey getting the rebound. Sharks looking to extend a four-point lead. And they're losing their opening game at the Virtu Arena against the Newcastle Eagles. Pulling off in the mid-range. Finding nothing but net. Just from 10 feet. A nice start here from the Sheffield Sharks. Pipkins again hitting that jump shot. Well, quick response there. Again, a bit of run and go basketball. Nice response there from Maceo Jack. You have to get back against Cheshire. They will push the ball up the floor and take that opportunity when they get it. These two teams now going back and forth with each other. Perhaps he slices the defense down, but I think it's going to take a last touch off of Skylar White. So it will be a baseline possession. Again, you can see him. He just fumbled it last moment. Had enough time and space to get a little shot off there. And you see that corner, that opposite corner was open with Sheffield there. This is the way they doubled down Cheshire. So Sheffield trying to take advantage of that. And they had a good drive there. Like you said, he just lost it and lost the ball out of bounds. Well, Ramsey, Allen, Pipkins, Rotino, and Bennett Cook currently on the floor for the Sharks. Rideau, Jack Stevens, Rye, and Skylar White currently on the floor defensively here for the Phoenix. As he comes off the screen, takes a tough mid-range fadeaway, and again had two players on him, but no problem there for D. Ramsey. Well, Phoenix looking to respond now, finding Ryan the corner. 
Another kick out, good bullman here from Cheshire Phoenix. Three is up and no good. Weak side rebound secured by the Sharks. Well, both teams now going from the perimeter. Three is up and again the three is good. Well, coach, you might need to get your right your umbrellas out because it's <laughs> raining at the moment here in the Cheshire Oaks Arena. And Pipkins had a great start, but that was a great find from Allen. He got in the lane, kicked it back out for the open look. And there's a the penetration. Find Skylar White. He tries to throw it again. A good response there from Skylar White. Both teams exchanging three-point field goals. And with all those three-point shooters on the floor, you don't want to allow penetration. And that time, Chester allowed too much penetration. Chester able to find a good look. Pipkins now 10 points so far here for the Sharks. Well, Kibbit Nichols wide open. Only just checked to the game, but why not try his <laughs> luck? And at the moment, these two teams cooking it early on here in the first quarter. Well, Kipper didn't really want that open look at first, threw it, and they said, hey, take it, Kipper, take it. And he did, and knocked it down. Rice spinning around now, kicking this one out. Phoenix go for another one. And just start to cool down here, just over four minutes. Well, Nichols in the paint now. Kicking this one out, find Adekoya. Adekoya tries a three-point, and somebody call the electrician. Because the Sheffield Sharks, they are shooting the lights out here at the moment. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a break. We'll be back momentarily. Welcome back, British Basketball League fans, to this matchup between the Cheshire Phoenix and the Sheffield Sharks. I'm Josh Bent. My co commentator tonight is Lester Ryder's head coach, Rob. Coach, Sheffield was 6 for 30 against the Newcastle Eagles in their opening game. But right now, I don't think they've missed a three pointer. Four for four, hot start from them. They've done a good job of moving the basketball, playing inside out, getting good looks. On the other side of the floor, Chester with a cold start from the three point line at one for five. And you can see how last, game, last week's game with Chester has influenced the way Coach Lyons is covering the Chester Phoenix. Well, bench technical has been called against the Phoenix as Ramsey unable to convert the free throw, but his team does have a 12 point lead. Now, what is it about this Sharks team that, you know, as a coach, you're kind of looking at going into a scouting report, you know, in preparation? Well, I mean, new team this year, a little different than last year, but you know they're not going to hurt themselves. Really solid on defense, get back on transition really well. Uh, the question is, can they put the points on the board? And so far, they've done that. Well, Phoenix now trying to find a way in this game. They need some inspiration. The question will be, where is it going to come from? And under intense pressure, has to get something going. Has to put up a tough one. And that's going to be, well, no, foul's going to be called against Ramsey. So a bailout there for the Cheshire Phoenix mm, coach. That was close to a shot clock violation. He'd be really disappointed with that call. But again, you know, the guards crashing in for the rebounds from Cheshire. You really have to hold that box out right to the end of the clock. Well, the Phoenix currently with Chagua, Kristen, Stevens, Rye, and Rideau on the floor. While for the Sheffield Sharks, still with Ramsey, Pipkins, Ada Rock, Nichols, and Adekoya. 
Yeah, Jules Adekoya, a player that did play for you, but defensively, what does he give to this team? Oh, he's a versatile defender with a lot of smarts, great late game situations on that end of the floor. Well, nice little play there by the Phoenix. As Rideau just getting his second field goal of the game, and cutting this down to a 10 point bowl game. Well, there you can see so far, Sheffield 8 for 10 from the field, while the Phoenix only 3 for 9, but early stages trying to build that momentum. Ramsey looking for a handoff. Six seconds, zero the shot clock. Got to get something going. Nowhere to go here. Has to put up another tough one. And Akoya unable to get the offensive board. Cheshire looking to extend. Right going in, a bit of contact off the Euro step. Well, that's good defense by the Sharks, but can they extend on this one? Well, Nichols made his last three. Maybe, no, going to get called for a traveling violation, but that's the second time he's given up a wide open look, coach. Yeah, I, you know, you, the first one maybe you understand, just got in the game, but you just made one from the same spot. Let that one fly, Kipper. Little indecision there caused the turnover. Well, Kipper Nichols, as we mentioned, has been a primetime player for the Sharks in the last few seasons, but you know, it's interesting with the Sheffield Sharks, a team that we're very much used to being one of the top dogs here in the British Basketball League. It's almost been like a roller coaster in the last few seasons. Well, Phoenix now trying to chip this down to single digits. Trying to find ways to break the defense down. Getting a handoff. Catch and shoot for the perimeter. Can't, can't get it. Adekoya with a rebound. Sheffield doing a good job of switching late on those screens and really bottling up Cheshire's offense. Throwing down to Nichols. Nichols looking for the post mismatch. Bit of contact, but again, gets that one to drop. And that's a good play for him, coach, to cement in the low block. I thought it was a good pass from Adekoya. That's one thing he brings from the five spot when he's playing the five, is he can really handle the ball and make passes. And Kipper, you know, if he gets that deep, he's tough to stop in the post. Phoenix looking to bounce back here. Still trailing by 12. Split the defense down, but they go for another three. Well, they get a good looks, coach, but they're unable to knock him down. But Arian right with the offensive board, and he will go to the charity stripe. Well, they were making all of them last week, I'll tell you that, but some of them going in and out. But that's where Ray is tough because, you know, you're missing shots, but he doesn't give up on the play. He uses that wide body, and he's got great hands and good timing under there. Nice job drawing the foul. Arian Rye, originally from Canada, also holds British citizenship through his family roots. Went to Dartmouth College in the NCAA in his final season in 2021-22 in 25 games. Almost averaged a double-double with 12 points and seven rebounds. And had a phenomenal season playing with the Hamilton. Also played in the CBL in Canada, which many of our British basketball players have featured in. He did play for the Scarborough Shooting Stars. Now, he's a versatile player, and I think as the season goes on, everybody's going to try to figure out what you do with him, how you guard him, because he... He's not a traditional four man. He's not a traditional three man. So it is tricky to get the matchup right with him. Well, Fowler's is going to be called in the backcourt here against the Cheshire Phoenix. But yeah, I really like Adekoye. You had the privilege of coaching this bat. I mean, you know, we know what, an, you know what a phenomenal team player he is. But offensively, there's a lot that he gives to your team. His passing is excellent. A big guy can pass. He has a good feel for the game. He'll make the open three when he gets it. Take advantage of the post player. But, you know, the thing with notice with Jabril right away when you coach him is his high IQ. He really is in tune on both offense and defense and understands what plays are needed. Shock still lit by 10 points. Attacking the basket here very aggressively, trying to find those openings. Adekoya got it heavily. Well, they go for a tough contested three-pointer. Unable to knock that one down, but now the Phoenix looking to chip into deficit. Right going coast to coast, but can't finish it. A bit of a wasted opportunity there for the Phoenix. I thought Nichols did a good job of challenging that shot and made Rye miss that. And that's where Rye, he gets the rebound off the backboard. He goes from backboard to backboard with the ball. You better have your defense set up to stop him because he can get right to that rim. Also has a Vladi Divac about him getting rebounds, but also showing, you know, the confidence to go all the way. But nice little change of the hands in the lane. And again, finishes under intense pressure by Allen. Yeah, good move from Al, and Hudson just checked into the game, and he said, hey, Mr. Hudson, have some of this. Blew right past him to the basket, but a silly foul there from Al, and in the backcourt, uh, you know, you don't want your players to pick those up, but nice decision from him here. Hudson picks him up at the halfway line. No help comes over, and Allen with the nice fish. Almost went out the door after that basket. He was going so fast. Terrell Allen, as we mentioned, is going to be a huge factor for the Sharks, but... 
You know, speaking of Terrells that have played for the Sheffield Sharks, I'm going to give you one familiar name, Terrell Myers. Sure, played against him a lot. He's from Connecticut, just like myself. Terrell Myers, great player in the BBL. Actually went to the Spanish ACB after he left the BBL. Let him in scoring for Girona, so he was a great player. But here, bad foul. You know, put them to the line when you didn't need to. But he misses both, so I guess it, it worked out in the end. And that's where Sheffield has to improve from last week. They gave 39 free throws to the Eagles. That's you're not going to win games when you do that. Well, defensively, the Sharks do need to tighten up, but at the moment, they do have a 12-point cushion. You can extend the lead here. Throwing his down low to Adekoya. Adekoya makes a pass to Ramsey. Ramsey had a bit of time and space, but went for the tough one. And Devo Ramsey, at the moment, building his confidence. Nice play from Adekoya. He's a really good passer out of that post. You can't lose your man if he gets it down there. Biggest lead of the game now, 14-point deficit. Phoenix still going from the perimeter, forcing up the tough ones. Adekoya being an insurance policy is securing the rebound for the Sharks. Well, time is on the side of the Sharks here. They have a few seconds here to get the shot off. Ramsey keeps the defense, goes himself, can't get it. And at the end of the first quarter, it is indeed the Sheffield Sharks who lead this one 26-12 against the Cheshire Phoenix. We'll be back momentarily for the second quarter. Better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. Can you believe it? We are British basketball. Welcome back, Basel fans, to this British Basel League fixture between the Cheshire Phoenix and the Sheffield Sharks. Well, to all the fans watching live here on the official British Basel League YouTube, we'd also like to say that at the moment, Caledonia Gladiators are leading against Fribourg Olympic in the pre-qualifiers of the Basel Champions League at the moment, 23 to 9. That is live on the BCL YouTube. But at the moment, we'd highly encourage you to split both your screens for this game and that game. Well, coach, at the moment, you know the Phoenix I think it's very tough here from the field at the moment. Not a great shooting percentage, unlike their opening game against your lesser riders. Yeah, four for 15 start, one for seven from the three-point line. Well, there is the rebound now secured. Another turnover from the Phoenix. Ramsey looking to throw this one down to Adekoya. Adekoya bumps in the lane now. A nice little post move. Can he finish it, but doesn't get the right angle. But another steal here by Ramsey. Coach, this Sharks team, they are very relentless. Well, that was Adekoya, actually, with those quick hands. We've seen him do it before, and he keeps the ball alive for Sheffield. Well, one too many passes. Ladies and gentlemen, look out below as he throws it down with two hands in transition. And again, the previous play, Coach, 
you want to say sharing is caring, but probably one too many passes. Yeah, sometimes you can throw one too many, but good job from Cheshire there, getting that ball in the open floor and getting the easy do to start, deuce to start the quarter. Well, could have made it a 16-point ball game. Nichols looking to attack it. Makes a bit of contact, gets rejected. Well, what a block shot by Maceo Jack. Can of Phoenix counter. They go for a three in the corner. Three is up, but again, no good. Well, case of living and dying from the perimeter, coach. And that's where Cheshire's been tough, though. The points off turnovers in game one were huge for them. They get the open layup, the play before, and that was an open three. They're just not knocking them down. Only four defensive rebounds for the Phoenix. 12 Garley for the Sheffield Sharks. Tough shot there by Ramsey. At the moment, Phoenix just need to calm themselves down, settle into this game. Well, Rideau now coming up ball screens, finds Skylar White. Ramsey very aggressive here on the switch. White getting called to Dalton, but that's much better by the Phoenix of finding other ways to score. Well, that's what they did there. They switched because of Skylar White, but they came with two guys, and nice job from White to find the open man. Well, the 14-point lead has been cut down here, two 10 points. Is at the moment, a team alliance are very interesting. Quick to call the timeout here to prevent any momentum coming from the Phoenix. Yeah, and you know, it, it, you got that timeout coming, uh, you know, in a few minutes or so, but he doesn't want to wait. And that time, an excellent pass from White. They switched at the top of the key with him to put the little guy on him. But what he has to do then is take advantage of that matchup. So they have to bring the double team and then make the right decision he did there. At the moment, the team alliance talking it over with his players, but also Ben Thomas, a little bit of momentum for them. But as we mentioned, this is a team, as we know, their bread and butter is from the perimeter. But, you know, where are some other ways that they can attack this game? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are the fixtures for next week. The big game will be on Thursday, the Sky Sports game between London Lions and the Bristol Flyers. While Plymouth City Patriots on Friday, they'll take on the Giants. But, you know, Coach, your next game, of course, will be against... Bristol on Saturday. I mean, that's going to be a tough game, of course. Always a tough place to play. You know, we certainly had some really tough games down there. They play Thursday against London, so get a good opportunity to watch them there. But yeah, challenging road game in the BBL. Coach Lyons after the timeout, maybe wanted to adjust the coverages a little bit. You know, didn't saw something he didn't like. And, you know, that's his quick timeout, obviously, coming out of the quarter. But sometimes you need to. Well, there you can see Coach Ben Thomas hoping now that his play can come up with a big defensive play at the moment. Cook here in the low block, got it by Skylar White. Finding Ramsey, off the give and go to get Ramsey. Now, he likes to take tough shots under pressure, Coach. Yeah, he can hit that mid-range tough pull up. He does that well, but that was all set up by going inside. Going inside to Bennett, open that up. Well, it makes a penetration inside the lane, can't get it. Phoenix coming up with a second chance, but 10 seconds remaining here on the shot clock. Looking to isolate. Go for three, three is up, and finally get it to go again. And that's what the Phoenix need. Well, Maceo Jack, when he has those feet set out there, he can knock it down. That was a good job again, though. It's getting in the paint with the mismatch. I thought Stevens went by Bennett, was able to get in there. Nice kick out pass. Well, can they extend on this one? The Phoenix will need to stop defensively. Cook now looking to isolate. Goes for a little bit of a jump, but a bit too short. But now they have numbers. Three on two. Makes the pass, goes up, and finishes it. And now it's a 5-0 run here for the Phoenix. Well, good job from the Phoenix of getting out in transition. When you look at this lineup with the Sharks, with both Atacoya and Bennett, Cook on the floor. Maybe they can get out in the open floor and beat them for buckets. Well, made his last three at the moment. He remains on fire here for the Sharks. And Stewart. Yo, he's got a very interesting NCAA career that we spoke about. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, certainly could shoot the ball from the perimeter, played at Pitt, played at Indiana, played at UC Tennessee Martin as well, uh, jumped around a bit. But the first game against Newcastle, I was impressed by his shooting stroke. He was three for nine, but they looked good coming out of his hands, and that time they looked good as well. Well, the Quincy Rideau gets called for the illegal screen. Well, Stewart, as we mentioned, is playing with a lot of confidence here, becoming a real threat from the perimeter. I mean, almost the, the go-to option here. Well, he's a guy that can stretch the floor. You have to know where he is. If they're going to throw the ball inside, you can't help down as much with a guy like that on the floor. Ramsey coming off a bull screen, trying to go down to Cook. Cook under the basket. The foul is going to be drawn against Scala White. 
Well, that was a great play from Adekoy. He's got three assists already in this game, and he pops. Bennett Cook rolls, and he throws that one-handed pass. That's his passing ability is sure, surely a weapon out there that the Sharks can use. Well, Cook, of course, becoming not the foundation big bad, but you know we'll do a lot of good things for your team, setting ball screens. But you know, in my mind. We have seen games over the past few seasons where he does have a very good low post game. Oh, he does. He's tough to guard in the post. You know that. I mean, you know you have to really force him off his spots. And the thing with him is how long can he go? He played 17 minutes the other night, four fouls. How many minutes can you get out of him? Well, when he's on the court, he can be really, really tough in the post to guard because, you know, he likes the right, but sometimes he will go left as well. Phoenix now looking to cut this down to single digits. Tries a ball screen, split the defense down. Good ball movement. Even better closeout defense, but a foul has been committed by Stewart. Man, you have to blame Bennett Cook for that one. Uh, Rideau split the ball screen and was into the paint. There you see, he goes right by Bennett. And now you're in trouble trying to close out these shooters. And good job from Christian drawing the foul. So will be a possession back here to the Phoenix. Going to that pick and roll with Skylar White. White had the three, takes a dribble. Skyler White nails it from downtown. Well, that's what happens when you don't switch the pick and roll. He does get that space, and I think he does a good job of allowing the defense to go by him and still stay beyond that three-point shot. He's deadly from there. Eight-point deficit. Phoenix trying to be more aggressive here on defense. They've trailed by as many as 14. As Cook now goes into the lane, can't get it. Another three-point shot here in the shocks at the moment. Mm -hmm. A team who only made six three-pointers against the Eagles at the moment. They are cooking, Coach. Yeah, they are. And that time it was off an offensive rebound. And those are tough to guard, those three-point shots after an offensive rebound. Everybody's scrambling. Well, Pipkins at the moment now leading the way here for the Shocks. With Ramsey coming off the screen, going all the way with a little finger roll and just kisses that one off the backboard. A pretty move from Ramsey. We've seen him pull up and take the jumper, but that time with the one hand extended off the glass. Well, Phoenix need to keep their confidence here. Ryan going in with a tough little Euro step. I like to call that the Canadian wow. step. I mean, he covers a lot of ground with those steps. That's what makes him so difficult to guard. He goes one way and then the other quickly. Nice finish from Ray. Well, Ramsey now been in too much time and space in the mid-range, but the Phoenix survived that. Going under the bull screen. Yeah, well, it was interesting that they did that, and Ramsey wanted to punish him, but wasn't able to. Well, again, another quick shot. i got to ask you, I mean, you know, he's made one three. Is that the right shot to take in the offense when you're trying to get back in the game? Well, it was last week, so let's see. I mean, we'll see what it's like tonight. Well, the rejection from behind says not in my house. Finds Ryan transition, and a bit of end-to-end -end action here from the Cheshire Phoenix. Yeah. Well, starts with the defense coach, but converting it into transition points. Yeah, great pass. I thought he did a good job, Rideau, looking away, the defense. And Rye, I said, he runs from backboard to backboard, and he gets the finish there. We'll be back momentarily, ladies and gentlemen.
Welcome back, Vassal fans. And Ben Thomas, probably a lot to say to his players in that recent timeout, Coach. Well, he wants to hang around here. It hasn't been a great start for him. He knows he's at home, though. Got to hang around the halftime. It's a big part of the game here going into, you know, this the, the second part of this second quarter. So a couple stops here, a couple buckets, right back in it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching us live on the British Basketball League YouTube, please can you subscribe, leave a like, but also follow the British Basketball League on all social media platforms. Well, Adekoy with a pump fake goes in and plays a bit of bully basketball. And Coach, you are very used to seeing him do that. Nice move from the perimeter. He caught the ball behind the three-point line, but he has the ball handling ability to go left there. Little up fake. Nice finish for two. Good first half from Jabril. Still a double-digit lead here to the Sheffield Shocks. Phoenix at the moment again, as we mentioned. Trying to find ways to break this defense down. Right with the post up, has a kick out. Go for another three point, but the closeout, and that makes it way off the mark. Stewart secures a rebound. Sheffield looking to push. Well, no foul called on the transition, but again, the three pointer isn't converted. Well, again, Cheshire go for another three point. This one's wide open, and this one is no problem for the Phoenix. Good play from Ray there. He pushed the ball and found the open man. But if you're Sheffield, you've got to match up with shooters in transition because they run the floor well and they do a good job of spacing out to get the open looks. Maceo Jack making the fourth three pointer of the game here for the Phoenix. And currently taking his tally up to eight points. Shocks now again trying to find that balance here on offense. Stewart goes for a Hail Mary three-point, and again, it's on target, but unable to secure it. Right now, drawing the foul. The foul is going to be called on the ground against the Sheffield Shocks, but you like the fearless approach that this man has every time he has a rock in his hands, Coach. Well, this time here, he makes the pass. Wide open for three. But he does a good job of rebounding, so he has the ball in his hands a lot. And then that time, again, the penetration, hard to guard. Draws the foul. Played his university boss with Dartmouth College alongside Taylor Johnson, who currently plays for the Plymouth City Pages. Those two were teammates last season at Hamill. And again, when you play college together and you have a successful tenure, but also an even better tenure when you're playing in the NBL, I mean, you're almost destined to play in the British Basketball League. Yeah, he's a guy that I think a lot of the teams looked at because of the numbers he was putting up. And Cheshire got in there early and signed him. Well, nowhere to go inside the paint. Hits the top of the backboard. Sheffield can't push this one, but not getting numbers ahead. Going down to Jules Adekoya. Got it by right. Jules spinning baseline. Nowhere to go here. Sheffield now going again in the paint. Double clutching, drawing the foul against Skylar White. So Kipper Nichols will go the free throw line here for two shots. A nice play from Idle Rock. Had some good minutes last week up at Newcastle. And that time, he showed his passing abilities. He got in there and slipped it nicely to Nichols. You see here, nice little dish here, look away. And Skyler didn't love the call, did he? Well, I can't say he uh, approved of it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, for the viewers watching at home that, you know, want a full assessment of these players, what kind of position would you label Kippa Nichols as a player? Uh, he's a 4-3, I'd say, you know, a power forward that could sometimes play the three. Uh, he's not a huge offensive rebounder, but he's a really good one-on-one -on -one player at times. You know, I think that, you know, he can he's a guy that can carry them at times with points. I think when he looked when Coach Lyons looked at that roster that he had, he said, hey, there's a need for that. And let's bring Kipper back. And like I said before, I think he'll fit in very well. I see him in picking up full court. He understands what the team wants and when they want it. This will now be his fourth season here with Sheffield Sharks, who mentioned played at the University of Illinois, but another turnover for the Phoenix. And you know, at the moment, Cheshire looked like they're lacking the discipline and spacing in their offense. Well, that time, Ryan looked to take to Adekoy, but Adekoy did a good job of holding him up, and there wasn't really much space in there to either make the pass or to finish the basket. It's only the fourth turnover of the game here for the Phoenix. I mean, these two teams have done a phenomenal job of taking care of the basketball. But, you know, for the Phoenix, trailing by 10, they can't afford those turnovers. Nichols cut on the screen now. Goes in a little teardrop off the backboard. A blocking foul is going to be called against the Phoenix. Now, explain it to the viewers, why has that been called a blocking foul as opposed to a charge? Well, I guess he was moving. I have to watch that again. And that time, Idle Rock came off a down screen. Nobody was there. 
Um, was his foot in there? I'm not sure. I can't see. It looked like he had pretty good position. That's why the puzzled look on his face, as you can see here, huh? What? No way. See, my really? issue with that is I thought he was inside the restricted zone, but you clearly saw in the replay he wasn't. Yeah, I guess um, you know, they thought he moved in late. And that's a tough call for the officials to make, that block charge call. Always a challenge. Of course, all the viewers watching, when you are not the primary defender and you are with inside the restricted zone, the semi-circle shape, that's always going to be called a blocking foul. But in that case, that's a very tough call, Coach. Tough call. Second free throw has been converted. It's always great when you see a new player come to the British basketball because, you know, we are a very unique pro league as opposed to our counterparts in Europe and you know, all over the world for that matter. But, you know, how do you describe the British basketball league to new players adjusting? Well, there's a lot of pace, a lot of speed. You know, I think there's a lot of guards, especially this year. They've raised the import rules, so there's more imports. And you'll find a lot of people that can take you off the dribble. So you have to have quickness to play in it, no question about it. Not a lot of traditional size, maybe more than it used to be, but certainly a league where play teams get up and down the floor and you have to have quickness to stop. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we have an exciting game, but look forward to our next game on Thursday. London Lions, they'll be hosting the Bristol Flyers. That's on Sky Sports, and that will be our game of the week. And, you know, you're a coach that has dominated, but at the moment, inside the paint, and it's also featured on the official YouTube of the British Basketball League. But also, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching the stream live, please make sure you hit that like button and also subscribe to the British Basketball League on YouTube and all other social media platforms. Well, you look at now coming out of the timeout, 43-31, 12-point lead for the Sharks. If you're a Tiba Lions, you're saying, take your time here. Nothing crazy. The clock's our friend here. Go into the lead, go into the half with a good lead. And for Cheshire, you want to make sure that you stop the bleeding here. This has been a rough first half for them. You know, 110 on the board last week, only 31 now. So it's very important they find a way to break down this Sheffield defense. This is also the beauty of the British basketball league. No doubt, of course, Sheffield opening two games on the road. You know, a bit of a heartbreak for them on the road against Newcastle. But doesn't look like the same team that we saw in that opening game. There's a lot of time for you to bounce back and reevaluate how you go into your next game. Yeah, no doubt. And here they go right into Aaron Ray in the post. Good defense from the Sharks. Well, Sheffield doing a good job of keeping Cheshire off the offensive boards. Yeah, and you like to see this from Sheffield. I mean, they're not a team that likes to play run and gun basketball. They do slow the pace down if they need to. Well, Adekoy set the ball screen. Again, going in with a left-handed George Govan S shot. And again, coach, is that Kipper Nichols or is that George Govan <laughs> in a Shocks jersey? Welcome back, Kipper Nichols. They like to see that. Not a guy that went left a lot early in his career. He has developed that. Great finish, left-handed, off the glass. Well, that could potentially be a two-for-one here for the Sharks, but we have to try and get a stop at Arian Wright, cutting down. No help side defense. Well, Coach, you might need to look in the lost and found. Well, poor communication from Sheffield there, and, you know, simple cut there. They Two guys went to, to the ball, and wide open, big basket for Cheshire to try to keep it close here as we go to halftime. Ramsey coming off one ball screen. Well, they get a look at the corner. Three is up, no good, but a rebound has been secured. Cheshire will get the last shot here in the first half. Trailer by 12. Coming up the ball screen, taking a Helmer oh. three-pointer. And again, the party just getting started here at the Cheshire Oaks Arena. Oh, okay, yeah, coach. Call the fire department because these two teams, <laughs> they have been off for Waco in this game. Big shot to end the half. That'll make Cheshire feel good. But good half from Sheffield. Solid on defense. Converted on offense. Give them that lead. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back momentarily. Everyone knows you deserve it. Yeah. There must be blind like curtains, certain. Anything you've got, you've earned it. Earned it. Sky is the limit, just reach for the You're so high, it's achievable. Yeah. Can't stop me, I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Every time they want to clash, I am unbeatable. Chance is running out of stock. And we're running out of clock. I found what's going to stop. I am unbeatable. I am unbeatable. Clock's 
turn, what you learn? How many years been working for my son? You're a step like roller coaster. This one right here for the coach. Let's take this thing higher. Higher than you ever been. Stand tall like Everest. I mean, higher. You ain't gotta settle in. Go places they never been. We go higher. No stop. Take it to the top even when the ball drops. My man. We are basketball. Team. It's every. We fight till the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win. Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and the playoff champions. I've seen this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. Can you believe it? We are British basketball. Lewis throwing it. Oh! oh! And there's all post arises slapping his head top again. Legion Roberti putting a body. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say that is top 10, maybe number one. Welcome back, Basel fans. This is British Basel League fixture between the Sheffield Sharks and the Cheshire Phoenix. Coach, looking at these statistics, what has been the story so far here? Well, three-point percentage, five for 14 from Cheshire. Uh, good job from Sheffield. That's six for 10 from the three-point line for the Sharks. So they're shooting the ball pretty well. And we talked about Sheffield fouling too much last week. Well, they've only given up six free throws to Cheshire. That's been important in the first half. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to look at the tail of the first half between these two teams, the Sheffield Sharks and the Cheshire Phoenix. Well, from the opening tip, of course, the Sheffield Sharks that came out like a house on five. And coach, I mean, this is a turnaround from their opening game against the Newcastle Eagles. Yeah, they looked really good early. I thought defensively they were solid, but they got good looks at the basket with really good ball movement and played inside out. But again, when you have a player like Pipkins who can make the shot at the end, it's tough. You know, a couple shots they made at the end of the clock, which really helped their offense click. Well, she Sheffield collectively moving the ball around, getting high percentages from the field. But, you know, they came out, as we mentioned, making the first four three-point field goals. But let's look at their transition play. Break it down to defense. Kick you out. Again, it's wide open three-pointers. Yeah, nice job there by Allen getting in there. He could pass the ball, and that time he didn't. Here it's Kipper. He had the open one, but they gave it back to him. Jabril said, shoot the ball, Kipper. And he knocked it down. Welcome back to Kipper. Nichols had a pretty good first half. Well, Jules Adekoya throwing this one down, as we mentioned. Kipper Nichols. Showing how he's too big, too strong, and just too good to any defense inside the paints. Nice pass. We talked about it. And here's the turnovers, though. And last week, Cheshire was really good at converting off turnovers. Sheffield's done a good job of taking care of the ball, not allowing to do much of that in this game. Well, Cheshire, as you mentioned in the second quarter, able to turn around. Scott White there, pump fake off the dribble, doing what he does best. But Cheshire, as we mentioned, as good as they were offensively in the second quarter defensively, that is where they need to tighten up against the Sharks. Well, there you see where Ray can get to the basket. I think, she I think Cheshire will be happy that they made that last three, obviously. But it keeps him in striking distance. And when you got a guy like Jack running the floor and knocking down shots, he could bring them back in the game. 11 points in the first half for Jack. Again, it's been an amazing output here. Nichols taking it in, looking like George Gervin from the Sheffield Sharks. But it really has been a tell. 11 three-point field goals combined made between these two teams. Five here. There was the final one from ACO Jack. Nailing it under pressure. But, Coach, you know, looking at this game so far, I mean, not a lot to separate these two teams. Cheshire, maybe it's only a matter of time before they get themselves back into it. They got to get out in the open floor. They need stops to do that. If they get out in the open floor, they got so many shooting, so many shooters, they'll be dangerous. Well, Basel fans watching us live here on the official YouTube platform, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be back for the second half momentarily. Drive 
driving inside. Ball moved out to Johnson. Taylor Johnson now for three. And it's nothing but net cash money. Wow, what a shot from Taylor Johnson. Oh. It's showtime. Blake Bowman, the showman. His first dunk of the game. You're guaranteed at least two of them a night. <laughs> two? Okay, I'm going to hold you to that. His Bowman. Pass fake to Vincent. McKenzie straight back into Bowman. Euro step. Left hand punch. And there's your two again. Hey, <laughs> a little flare from Bowman there. And another interception now for Holmes. He skips away from Dangakodo again. Holmes, Thomas, bang, bang. And here come the Leicester Riders. Here we go, driving baseline. Look at that. No look. Wow. Time inside. And the foul is called. The basket is good. TJ Atwood. And they've turned it over here, the Riders. Pushing forward. Atwood is at the rack, but no. It's time for a pulverizing drive to the bucket from Jacob Wiley. Boom! Damn. Clock winding down, five seconds on it. Can Plymouth pull something else out the hat? Is Mason Faulkner fading away? Oh, yes, they can! Mason Faulkner with a big-time three! Bridges kicks it up top. Thomas for three, and that's nice. Solid. Inside out basketball, keep it simple. DeAndre Johnson skipped across. Blake Bowman, Euro stepping to the left. And one again. Blake Bowman finishing at the rack, and that will get the crowd going. Riders now with a chance to take the lead. They've been trailing for most of this game. Idowu, strong cross, and it's good to go. Riders back in this one. They need to stick it out a little longer if they want the victory. And DeAndre Johnson fires the three. As a coach on the sideline, I was thinking, please don't shoot that. Mackenzie! The captain leading from the front. Great game to watch as the Leicester Riders are off the mark after what looked like treacherous times. Rob Paternostro gets the job done. Lobs it in, reverts it. Great footwork and the two-handed Henry almost pulls the basket down. Rock the rim on that one. Oh. Miss Anderson down low. Lions running the floor and out of nowhere. They've tied things up here. Nice pass. Morgan open for three. Beautiful assist from Luke Nelson. Really nice. Put that on top ten highlight plate. Matt Morgan pushing, Matt Morgan kicks to Connor Morgan. Morgan to Morgan for three. So smart by Matt Morgan. Anderson, Rossier open for three, knocks it down. Perfect way to finish the half. Burton has a mismatch inside. They get it to him and he rocks the rim once again. And hits his head top, his go-to show move. Looking baseline, here he is again! He's putting on a dunk show tonight! Oh, that is too nice. What a beautiful play from the London Lions. It's a great finish, but a tremendous this. pass as well. Yep. Grantham pass inside to Olesheny. That's a, giving up a good shot for a better one. And here's Robertson again! Another massive jam, and he says he's too small to guard me. <laughs> oh my gosh, legend is hilarious. Sharma looking for a little help, can't find any, so goes alone, and Robertson says, not in my house, throws it to the bleachers. Whoa, he's doing it all, dunks on everyone's head, and then blocks that shot. Oh, lobbed up to Sharma, catches the alley-oop and jams it home. His turn for a highlight play. Oh, and it is Josh Sharma who brings up the century with a two-handed throwdown. He's had enough. He's showing you that he's a highlight reel. A dominant display, slow start, but really 37 points in that second quarter.
position, and that was really where Coach Bozic and his team pulled away. Until the final moment. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. Mackenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are British basketball. Lewis throwing it. Oh! And there's all posterizer slapping his head top again. Legion Robertin putting a body. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that is top ten. One. Welcome back, Basel fans, to the British Basel League fixture between the Cheshire Phoenix and the Sheffield Chucks. Well, I'm Josh Bett. He's head coach of the Leicester Riders. Coach Rob Paternostra, I got to tell you, this has been a crazy game so far. Yeah, listen, uh, Sheffield had a good start. Uh, got out in front, but Cheshire making that three at the end will have the momentum going in at the half. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at some of the results so far here from the British Basketball League. You know, coach, a big turnaround, a great win for your team, of course. You know, struggling in the early stages. But let's look at that Bristol Flyers game against the Newcastle Eagles. Newcastle getting off to a 2 0 run, a good start for the Geordies. Oh, no doubt. And anytime you go down to Bristol and get a win, tough place to play. They were losing a lot of that game, but were able to come back, have a great fourth quarter to get the job done. Well, the London Lions, you know, starting right off where they finished from last season, two big emphatic victories against the Caledonia Gladiators and the Manchester Giants. Gladiators at the moment currently playing in their pre Basel Champions League qualifiers. But again, you know, it's been a good start for the Lions. Oh, no doubt. They look really good. I you know it brought back a lot of players. The new players look good. It'll be a real challenge for anybody to deal with that all season. Team Alliance currently looking for his first victory of the season. As we mentioned, Cheshire Phoenix getting a very good victory against your team. But, you know, in that game, you know, it's tough when you play your first opening game. You don't know a lot about each other, but they shot a hell Mary night from the perimeter. Well, you see Coach Lyons watch that game, no doubt. I spoke with him, obviously. You know, I speak a lot of coaches, and, you know, he made adjustments here with this team. He's done a good job defending them in the first half. Shocks getting things going early here. They get the first possession. Adekoya, the former rider, looking for a post up here against Skylar White. Adekoya goes to the one-legged fadeaway again. That's way off the mark. Adekoya in the start and lineup second half for Bennett Cook. Go right to him on the first possession. Phoenix looking now to try and chip in more to deficit. Moving the ball effectively. One thing's going to be on their game plan, trying to get that wide-open shot from the perimeter. But time is winding down. Nowhere to go now. Spins between the Whoa. defense, goes up and... Well, they've caught a foul there. It looked like a good, clean block. I don't know. I think they've called this one against Ramsey. Let's have a look. I'm going to let you assess this well, one, Well, I didn't know where Rideau was going there, but he made a nice spin move to get there, and that's a tough call 
uh, you know, on the foul for Jack. But give Rideau credit. I thought he, you know, took a little too long to make the move, but then made that spin move. You know, able to get him a layup. When you look at Sheffield last week, only 32 points in the second half against the Eagles. They're going to be hoping for more uh, today. You know, I don't know if the 32 in this half will get it for them. So they're going to have to have a better output on the offensive end in the second half tonight to get the W. Well, originally from Buffalo, New York, went to the University of Buffalo. Maceo Jack definitely becoming a big impact for this Phoenix team. Well, didn't actually play at GWU as well before transferring to Buffalo, but nonetheless now cutting it down to a seven-point ball game here. Sharks looking for their first field goal. Getting right to the bucket. Way too easy for the Sharks. Well, Pipkins had a really good first half for them, and now he takes it right to the basket. We saw him hit the jumpers before, but this time on the pick and roll. Skyler White doesn't do a good job of corralling him, and he gets to the rim for two. Defensively at times, we've seen Cheshire look a little bit like they have struggled immensely, but now they're going to try and go for another perimeter shot. Go for the mid-range. Can't get it. Adekoya securing the rebound. Good baseline help from Sheffield on the post up. Holden likes to take little guards down there. Sharks dealt with it well. Well, Nichols only one point away from being the Sheffield Sharks player. Second one, excuse me, for getting into double figures. Looking for the isolation again, going off the backboard. Adekoy unable to get. Look, like taking candy from a baby on that one. Pipkins now, he's been on fire and remains wow. that way. This guy has come ready to play, Coach. No doubt about it. But the play was made by Allen. He does a lot of nice little things on the floor. He makes the steal, kicks it back out, and Pipkins is on fire. The only team that we have representing here in the British Boss League from the county of Yorkshire at the moment. It's a northern derby here between these two teams. But another turnover. Now the Sharks have numbers. Ramsey looking to push this one. Pipkins goes and are you kidding me? Oh. This guy making a bit of magic on the floor as he now moves up to 20 points. Coach, he is just having fun out there. Oh, I love that there. They changed the, from, from defense to offense and Pipkins goes up on the right side and finishes on the left. Great left-handed pass there. Nice bounce pass up that way. How about the left hand for two? He's doing it inside and he's doing it outside for the Sharks. 14-point lead here have been a showtime Sheffield Sharks basketball and a team alliance credit to this man as you mentioned He has done his homework on the Cheshire Phoenix. Oh, yeah, they had a good job of defending now They have to stay solid and we talked about putting points on the board You know, that's been a problem in the past for them and this second half They've come out look, looking like a team that is ready to put a high number on the board Well, Pipkins has been a hot hand so far. That was the Still made by Allen but finding Pipkins on the perimeter at the moment, I mean, this team only made six three-pointers against the Newcastle League. At the moment, Sheffield, they are just having a parade from downtown. And a tough three-point shot to guard. Is that a, the steal or the offensive rebound? Nobody out there. But certainly, the Phoenix are going to have to do a better job on Pipkins. I mean, he's a guy that has created, made plays at the end of the clock. Going to have to try to shut him down going forward. I mean, we don't have 7-11 in Yorkshire or anywhere here in the United Kingdom, but that's been the three-point stat here for the Sheffield Sharks. Seven out of 11, that's much better than six out of 30. No doubt. I mean, they were, you know, all week, you know, getting better, getting better. The legs under them, you know, early in the season here, the conditioning isn't great, but they've come out today and certainly look like a team that is poised and making the right decisions on both ends of the floor. Phoenix now needs to rely on their offense, but another turnover. Ramsey, they have numbers. Ramsey throws up the alley-oop and the connection. Wait a oh. minute. And again, he had to elevate over the arena for that one. And again, who else, coach? I don't know if that was a great pass, but, but great finish from Pipkins. Couldn't dunk it, but the soft touch off the glass from him. Well, Pipkins at the moment, currently on a career high. His total has been 22 points he's ever scored for the Sharks. And a shout out to Philip Brown for that stat. One field goal away from getting his career high for the Sheffield Sharks. In anticipation, starts with the defense coach. Yeah, great play from Ramsey. Here's the alley-oop, but a little behind. But that's okay, Pipkin says. I'll just finesse it off the glass. Good play from him. 16-point deficit, the highest the lead has ever been for the Sharks. Cheshire, Sushi for answers, Aaron Rye. Again, going Noah, but you know, you know as well, when you've got someone like Jules Adekoya, he knows how to switch on pick and rolls. He can defend players on the perimeter. Well, Jabril used his hands really well there. He was able to, he got beat, but he's got such quick hands, he's able to, you know, make that play and knock it out of bounds. Well, looking for the post up now. 
Almost falling over it again. Somehow getting that one to drop. And that needs to be the confidence that the Cheshire Phoenix needed their offense. Well, that's what Holden can do. He's a guard that likes to post up. Did it a lot in college as well in that time. Too deep and too strong. Hadakoy getting the handoff. Going in and around. Can't get the finish on that one. Maceo Jack getting tripped. No foul call there by the official. Play continues. Well, we've seen time and time again when the Phoenix have trail. They've gone on many runs. Holden had to look at the corner, but a good closeout by Devell Ramsey. Seven here on the clock. Holden trying to post up. Nowhere to go. Again, nice little pass there by Aaron Ryder. Good anticipation yet again. Well, Ryder getting the offensive board. Goes up, draws a foul, but unable to get the M1. And Rye's one of those guys that if you're going to the park and you want to play basketball all day, well, hey, bring him in the car because he can do everything. He can pass. He always has a nose for the ball. He doesn't give up on the play here. He's right there. He's a guy that could fit into any team with that type of play. Tough, tough to stop. Well, made himself available there. They had the open look in the corner, but, you know, he had to, I mean, he made that pass. He had to go for the offensive rebound. And, you know, as a pro coach, what is the emphasis when you say to your team, look, nothing's working for us right now. We need to go in and be a little bit more hungry and go for second chances. Yeah, I mean, I think defensively they're going to have to shut them down. You know, if you want to get back in this game, you can't trade baskets with them. you got to have sustained stops. You know, you got to start now. You're up down 12, still a long way to go. you got to do a better job on the defensive end. Phoenix cutting it down, a 12-point game, going on a 4-0 run. But now they're going to have to rely on the defense. Nichols going in and around, can't get it. Good defense by Maceo Jack. Well, Maceo Jack of all trades having to play a variety of positions here for the Phoenix. Finds White, pump fakes. Scarlett indecisive what to do, but another offensive loose ball there from Aaron Wright. Good hands by Adekoya. Sharks looking to extend their lead yet again. Nichols now playing a bit of bully basketball. Coach, you might need to call the principal because he's bullying his way inside the paints. Yeah, nice play from Nichols, but I thought the play was made by Adekoya. He came up with the steal down on one end, drove it down, made the right pass. Adekoya doing a lot of little things out on the floor. Cheshire Phoenix, only one out of three teams here in the British Basketball League to ever win the quadruple. And a deep three come from Arian Rye. And well, that's what they need. If he's hitting shots off the dribble from three, that's tough to guard because you know how good he is going downhill by you. So you give him a little space. So that's a shot that the Sharks wouldn't have minded. But credit Ray for finding a way to make it happen. Well, another penetration, but the defense just been bailed out there. But it's too easy right now, coach, for the Sharks. Yeah, no doubt. That was easy. Well, it looks like a. Well, no, they're going to call a charge. I think. I'm not sure what they've called. Yeah, it looked like a charge to me. It looked like he was out of control. Not a tough call. Here's the advance. And boom! Draws the charge. LaQuincy didn't like it, but um, that thing was easy to spot coming up the floor that that was a charge candidate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back momentarily.
top even when above. Welcome back, fans. Live at the Cheshire Oaks Arena. The home crowd currently enjoy the occasion. Hey, you know, they are used to seeing their team play very well, but it's almost like they only want to play well against the Lesser Riders coach. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly played well last week, but it's a long way to go. You know, you're still a long way to go. Just have to be solid. And we got it. We talked about it before. It has to start on the defensive end. Shocks twice in this game have led by as many as 16 points. And, you know, Cheshire go on these mini runs and they try to go quick, but they just, it's consistency is the issue. Again, defensively, they've been very vulnerable inside the paint, coach. Well, nice back cut there. They tried to get over the top of the screen on the down screen, but Kip Pipkins with a smart back cut. Poor job by Cheshire, not ready to cover that. Phoenix now trailing by 13 points. Way here in the third quarter gone by. White finds Rye, goes in on a nice little block, but a foul is going to be called against Devoe Ramsey, I believe. Nice pass from White. You know, got the pick and pop at the top. But again, another thing that Ray does is he cuts very well off the ball and good pass and good find to draw the foul. Well, another replay of Pipkins. Again, a nice little back to a cut coming from the screen from Atacoya, but. I think now he's actually reached his high ever for a points in a game for the Sheffield Chucks. His high previously was 22 points. That was a stat enabled by Philip Brown. Now 24, so he's reached his. I mean, that's a huge monument for him. Yeah, good start. I mean, he had a good game the other night, I thought, in, in Newcastle, and certainly tonight. He's finding the basket from many different places. Well, cutting it down to 11 points. 4.22 to go here in the third quarter. Cheshire just trying to hang in there. You know, what would you say, of course, you know, haven't seen them in the opening game of the season, you know, has been a difference. I mean, obviously, we know the three-point shooting hasn't been going to effect, but defensively, what's been the problem for Cheshire? Well, they haven't got forced the turnovers that they did in game one. They haven't had the second-chance opportunities that they have at game one. You know, you stop that, you know, really stop them on the offensive end. Well, Aaron right now doing the solid rim protection. Cheshire had momentum, but good transition defense by Pipkins. Can they cut this down to single digits? Well, Ramsey trying to be very aggressive here on the defense. Kicks out, they go for another three. Three is up, and again, no good. It's those kind of offenses. If the three-point shots aren't dropping, where do you find your points next? Well, he tried to back him down there. I thought the Sharks did a good job of holding him up and not letting him get towards the basket. So they ended up having a contested three. Bennett Cook checking back into the game for the first time since the first half. Going down to the tower. Double team getting ready here, and a foul has been committed on the ground. Smart play from Bennett there. He saw that the arm was out and took advantage of that by drawing the foul. He's a crafty post player, has a bunch of different moves, uses his footwork well. Now coming off the bench, it looked like they can ride him out here at the end of the quarter. You see a lot of touches from him as the Sharks make their way through the end of the third. A foul was called on the ground against Ethan Chagua. So fresh 14 here for the Sharks. Pipkins now feel the confidence, but again, he turns it over. Cheshire have numbers. They've got to capitalize. But again, out of control, committing a charge. And that has been the story of the game here for the Phoenix. In transition, coach, they have looked very, very poor. Well, they had got their turnover. We talked about the points off turnovers they had last week. But Sheffield, again, does a good job of putting themselves in there to draw the foul. You know, it doesn't feel nice to draw a charge like that. But both times, the Sharks gave up their body and were there to stop that fast break. Well, the charge was called on Cam Kristen. At the moment, they need a bit of composure. Pipkins now gets a break on the sideline. Well, another foul is going to be committed. Screening foul on Bennett Cook, I believe. Been seen a lot of screening fouls so far in the BBL this season. I think if you're a coach, and I am, you are telling your guys daily, uh, you know, you have to set good screens because they will call it. You see Bennett with the arm around the shoulder, easy call to make there. And when you go back and watch that on film, you'll see, you know, you can't put that arm up there because they're going to call it. I mean, he's a great player. 
you know, he does a lot of good things. But the problem, well, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to that, the next week's biggest game of the week will be between London Lions and Bristol Flyers. That is on Sky Sports. So make sure you tune that in your diary. Tip off at 7.45 p.m. as Bristol Flyers will head to the Copper Box. Well, Phoenix now trying to find ways to get back in this game. Crossing over now, going all the way. Avoids the block, but again, just can't finish it. Another foul committed. You know, going back to the previous foul that was called against Bennett Cook. I mean, in the post, he set the screen perfectly. It's just such a silly mental blunder to make by putting your right arm like Yeah, that. you know, you got to be careful. You, and you don't want to pick up fouls if you're a guy like that. He had four fouls in 17 minutes last week. And that's usually the problem, you know. Obviously, you, as a big guy, you're going to get called for fouls underneath the basket on defense. You pick up those cheap ones on the offensive end, the reaches or whatever, you know, you're going to be in foul trouble. Well, the officials now, I'm not sure what a team of Lions is probably saying. I think maybe he's saying foul is a little bit overzealous and maybe a little bit too aggressive, but no way you could ever upgrade that to an unsportsmanlike. Well, a man who came to this country to play in the league, and it's always great to see a former player of a club become a coach of that franchise. Coach Lyons now is in a position here with 2.35 to go. Want to get a good shot. Don't want to turn the ball over. You want to keep this team quiet. And I think with good offense, you can do that. Adekoy here in the low block, looking to isolate. Nowhere to go now. Kicks out. Well, it doesn't take many three-pointers. Shifting around the defense and a 24-second violation. Good defense by the Phoenix. I think if Jabril had that over again, he would have let that one fly at the top of the circle. Maybe tried to make too much of a play there. But yes, Phoenix with a good defensive stand. That's something they've got to build their confidence on, try to solidify their identity in this game. Of course, the thing they like to go for, as we've seen in the opening game, has been the perimeter shooting, but at the moment, they are being tested. Early days of this season in the British Basketball League. Trying to find a handoff now. Time winding down for Arian Rye. Rye spinning, splits the defense. Almost Ooh. got the ad woman. He'll go to the free throw line. And I think that when you guard him, you have to really finish the possession off. He has a lot of extra moves if you defend him. And he does a good job of drawing fouls. You know, the way he moves his body, it's hard to guard him. And he flops, throws the head back, and he's going to get that one. He knows when the guy's too close, and he's able to draw the foul. Expect to see him at the foul line a lot this season with that type of game. Well, these two teams have been scoreless in the last few possessions. It's been a while since either of them have been able to put a field goal. Coach, one thing I've got to ask you, I'm a big fan of apparel, and I'm telling you, I'm loving both of these two teams' uniforms. <laughs> but this Cheshire Phoenix team, and you know, they are called the Knicks for a reason, gives me a little bit of a similarity to when Carmelo Anthony played in New York. <laughs> it does look good. The blue and orange uh, of the New York Knicks. Yeah, I was surprised when we saw them. i never seen orange in their kits before. I was surprised when they showed up with that. Of course, my favorite night of the 2021-22 season was the retro night in which you coached your lesser riders against the Giants, and they went back to the uniforms from the 90s, especially, well, early 2000s for that matter, when Lester under the great Billy Mims had won the double that year. Well, great defense by the Sharks, forcing the Phoenix into a turnover. Can they convert this into a transition bucket? But they're going to have to do it now from the half court. 120 to go here in the third quarter. Ramsey coming off one screen. Finds out Akoya. Got a wide open look from the Prona. Three is up. Shock's going a little bit cold here in the second half, coach. Good pass from Adekoya. Wide open Idle Rock. He's going to have to knock that one down if he gets that open look. Ten point deficit. The three is up. Three is good. Oh. And the whole crowd all of a sudden finding their voice into this game. Well, he was productive last week in low minutes, Christian off the bench. And that time with that funny looking shot, it knocks it down. It's a kind of a push shot. But again, Adekoya just showing the strength. Too big, too strong, and just too good. Bad job from Cheshire after scoring. They got to get back and load up and not allow an easy drive like that. Well, again, the Sharks' hands everywhere inside the cookie jar. Deval Ramsey felt like he was impeded when he went out of bounds. But 30 seconds in the game here in the third, but 12 on the shot clock. 
for the Cheshire Phoenix. But going back to what you said there, I mean, Cheshire make a great play on offense, but it's the defense of this game. Inside the paint, they've looked very vulnerable. Yeah, well, the Chessie transition there, that was the transition set up where the five man ended up driving to the basket and scoring. But still, down nine here with the ball, a big point of the game. You know, we finished the second quarter well with that bomb from Jack. Let's see if they can get one here. Well, the three-pointer would potentially cut this down to maybe a potential two-possession game. Perimeter shooting has been a struggle in this game so far for the Phoenix. The referees, again, shout out to the, well, I'm a fan of apparel. I'm actually liking the referees' uniforms every <laughs> week. That's a claret color. I love that. Sharp. Ten here on the shot clock for the Knicks. Going behind the back now, a bit of an isolation play. Elevates it again, no problem from 15 feet. Stevens with the pretty move. We've seen him score, played in the Big Ten with Minnesota, double-digit score. That time at the end of the clock, one-on-one. -on -one. Have some of that. Sheffield dribbles down here for the final possession. Allen coming off the screen now, goes to the mid-range, off the backboard. Phoenix have a second left, has to force up a Hail Murray shot. Whoa! Almost got it, but ladies and gentlemen, at the end of third quarter, Sheffield leads this one still by seven points. We'll be back momentarily for the fourth. Until the final moment. Sloan in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. Mackenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and the playoff champions. We've seen this in two decades. We are basketball. We are basketball. <laughs> We are basketball. We are British basketball. Final quarter about to get underway here between the Cheshire Phoenix and the Sheffield Sharks live in the British Basketball League. Ben Thomas currently after his opening victory against your Leicester Riders at the moment, trying to find a way for his team to get back in this one. Won the quarter 17 to 15, held Sheffield to 15 points. They have to do more of the same in this quarter if they want to get a W. Well, they will get the opening possession here in the fourth. Pick it, Bob White goes for a quick three point again. Nails that one under intense pressure. He was fired up coming into the bench as the third quarter ended, and he comes right out. He shot that ball before it even touched his hand. They've trailed twice on two occasions by 16, but now find themselves two possessions away for getting back in this. But now the defense needs to come big, but again, Sheffield getting inside the paint, but unable to count up. Well, Cheshire make a three-point, and there's another one up, and again, unable to secure it. Ramsey fighting for the rebound. Comes up with a loose ball. Makes the bounce pass, finds out a Koya. Koya gets rejected. Well, that was a case of Santa Jibro, not in my house. Nice play from Ramsey, I thought, picking up the ball. He's like that midfielder that wins the ball all the time. He goes and gets it, and Jibril got a good pass, but wasn't able to finish. Good defense there from Christian, protecting the rim. 
Well, that was timed to perfection, because any later, that would have been two free throws coming up for Adekoya. Shocks with the chance now to extend the lead again. Good ball and find Ramsey, pump fakes. Takes his dribble, finds a three-point. A nice little play there by Devell Ramsey. That's why when you close out the three-point shooter, you can't allow him to just up fake and take that side dribble. Ramsey with a good job there, creating the space and knocking it down. Oh, we're talking about a player that doesn't take many three-pointers. I mean, he loves to go for the mid-range. But at that point, that's a big shot because it just silences the momentum from the Phoenix. No doubt. Can the Phoenix respond here? Trying to take on Adekoya, puts up a tough one. Nobody going in for an offensive rebound. Sharks could go back up by double digits. Ramsey kicks out to Adekoya. I was going to ask you, how many three-pointers did Jabril Adekoya take for you? Boy, I'd have to look that up, but um, he'll take the open one, I'll tell you that. He's not a guy that takes volume threes, but he's a guy that you have to respect out there, and he does such a good job if you chase him by dribbling and making a play. But there's another big basket there for the Sharks. Back up to nine. Ramsey going on a 5-0 run for the Sharks since the Skylar White three-pointer. Goes off the back door again. Probably should have kicked that one out in the corner for a wide open three, but it will be possession back to the Phoenix. Good defense without fouling from Sheffield there. You thought there was an opening, but they went straight up and didn't commit the foul. A lot of times you see guys just automatically foul in that situation, but you want to put the hands straight up and make them make the tough shot. Well, there's going to be five seconds left here on the shot clock for the Phoenix. Aaron Rye will inbound this one. Rye finding Jack now, goes to the mid-range. Again, six at one, with a hand in space. That's what the Phoenix needed. Yeah, I'd like to see Maceo Jack touch the ball maybe a little more. You know, he's 15 on the board now for him. He's looked really good when he's gotten the opportunities. Back to a seven-point deficit. Shaxo still in the control of this one. Going down to Adekoya. Fancy the mismatch here against Skylar White. Goes in the mid-range, can't get it. McCann to Phoenix collectively builds something up here. They got it back down to four points. But at the moment now, still trailing by seven. There's a penetration now. Whoa. Again, the referee wide open, but I don't think he could take a three-pointer <laughs> for either of these two teams. Well, that time LaQuincy did the job by getting in the paint, but poor decision. He wanted his players to move when he got there, but that was almost in the third row. And now you see the Sharks here slowing the game down. Well, just over seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Can't have been too much time and space. It misses heavily off the left. Right now trying to push this one here for the Phoenix. Right looking to attack here, trying to go to that spin out move that he loves to go to every time. Penetration down the middle, slicing and dicing the defense up. And the Phoenix cut it back down to five points. The well, last time he went in there, he tried to throw it out. But this time he said, no way. I'm going right to the basket. Big move. Big spot here for the Sharks. Cheshire going on a 4-0 run here in the last minute 27. Rudeau getting his third field goal. Sharks again turning down the temperature. And coach, I think the home crowd might need to get the jackets out. Maybe a little fatigue coming into play now for Sheffield. Remember, we talked about how they scored a low number in the second half in the first week. Cheshire shutting them down here in the second half this week. 6.18 to go here in the fourth quarter. Timeout's going to be cold at the moment. Sheffield, it has become Operation Hang On. Yeah, I think you got to look at the minutes being played here. You look at Jabril Adekoy, he's up to 26. Kipper over 20 now. You know, just probably got off the plane uh, a few days ago. So it would be interesting to see what they got left in the tank here in the final few minutes. Well, the upcoming fixtures here in the British Basel, as we mentioned, the game of the week will be between the London Lions and the Bristol Flyers. That's live on Sky Sports. But, you know, looking forward to your next game. It's going to be a big, big test for your players as they go up against the Bristol Flyers. Oh, yeah. Tough place to play. You know, good rebounding team. Tough hard-nosed team. You go down there on the road, you better be ready to play. We know Bristol uh, can be really tough at home. Obviously, they play Thursday as well. So it'll be interesting to watch that game going into Saturday. Newcastle Eagles looking to extend that unbeatable start here to the British Basketball League as they take on the Cheshire Phoenix. 
And ladies and gentlemen, currently watching us live here, we kindly ask if you can please subscribe to the British Basketball League on YouTube. Also, leave a like for this live YouTube stream and also follow the British Basketball League on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and TikTok if you can, please. Five-point game here. Still loads of time to go. Coming out of this timeout. We'll see what uh, Coach Thomas has drawn up to try to cut this deficit even farther. Well, find a bribe. Well, just takes a deflection off Kippa Nichols, and again, Phoenix getting lucky there. Well, that was a good play there. Rai takes one step and then cuts back doors. A backdoor play out of the timeout. He was open, but they weren't able to convert. Good call out of the timeout. 16 seconds here on the shot clock. Rival inbound is one. Three pointer would cut it down to a two point game. But Phoenix need consistency here in their offense. There's the cut goes in, the layup no good. The rebound beautifully secured by Pipkins. Mm, that wouldn't hurt if you're Cheshire. He had a good look at the basket there. He had just made that layup on the drive, but didn't make that one. Offensive foul called against the Sharks. And coach, nearly <laughs> two minutes. The Sharks haven't scored. Well, we talked about that being an issue, but they're hanging in there. They know they can hang their hat on their defense. But again, another screening foul. You know, we've seen these time and time again in this league, especially this season. You can't give away possessions with the screening foul. Well, big moment now again. The Phoenix have only scored four points in over two minutes so far in this run. But, you know, they really have to capitalize and take advantage of Sheffield's inability to create anything in their offense. Here's Rye in the post now with Adekoy, a strong post defender. Let's see what he has. Rye going for the fadeaway, tough one, but again, nobody going in for a second chance. And Sheffield, this is what I mean, Operation Hang On. They are surviving every single defensive play. Good defense from Jabril there, making him take a fadeaway. That's what you want. You don't want him close to the basket. Funny handoff now. Pipkins leading score in this game so far. Ramsey's made one three, left wide open, takes it, fires it home as Sheffield continue to pile on the pressure. Well, that's bad defense there. He had so much time from behind the three-point arc. And when you're a pro and you have that much time, you usually knock it down. Well, Ben Thomas has got to ask the question from his players, how can you have that wide open of a look as Skyla White tries to respond again oh. under intense pressure? Skyla. Wow, and that one, he wasn't open. He's coming left, but fades away and knocks it down. Skyler White trying to keep him in the game. Both teams exchanging three-point field goals. Final moments here. Adekoy crossing over. No foul call. Knicks come up with it. Can they get something here in transition? We know one thing's on their mind. It's going to be the three-point. The three is up, and again, no good. Mm, I thought they had an opportunity to take it to the basket there. Sheffield was slow getting back, but maybe the poor decision. Shocks again, as we mentioned, that only one three-point come from Ramsey. Going a long time without scoring so far here in these last few moments. Pipkins dribbling into traffic. Adekoy gives up. Two seconds now. Nichols goes in the lane again with the dagger. Right at the dime moments over the shot clock. Well, big play from Nichols. He's a guy at the end of the clock that can make a play. That's why it's nice for them to have him back. Nothing was there, but he created something out of nothing to give him the seven-point lead. Well, Jack makes a penetration, goes up, and it will count. And that's a tough, tough call there. He's driving to the basket, maybe on the floor, maybe not. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back momentarily for this game. Nah. 
Zero step like roller coaster. This one right here for the coach. Let's take this thing higher, higher than you ever been. Stand tall like Everest. I mean higher. You ain't gotta settle in. Go places that never been. We go higher, no stop. Take it to the top, even when a boat. Welcome back, Basel fans, here to the fourth quarter of this British Basel League fixture between the Cheshire Phoenix, who currently trail by five points against the Sheffield Sharks. Maceo Jack currently the free throw line after making that and one play. Can cut this down, coach, to a two-possession game. Yeah, big free throw here. You need them all now. Converts a three-point play, but defensively, this is where the Phoenix need to dig deep and find something within. As you mentioned, Sharks time and time again have responded when put under pressure. Well, they've held, Phoenix have held them to 25 points in this half. So, got to keep a little, keep up that work there, do a little more of that. And they put himself in position to win at the end. Cheshire have missed four free throws in this game. Think about it, you may go four of those missed free throws. It's a tie ball game, but at the moment, they need to be compact defensively. Ramsey comes up the mid-range, doesn't get it. The rebound secured by the Phoenix. Good defense from White that time to cause the tough shot. Trying to make the penetration, puts up another tough one, but no foul call. Clearly, it was a push in the back. But Phoenix survived. White goes for another tough three. It's up, and again, no good. Another offensive board here for the Phoenix. Pompey goes up, and again, no foul call. But the Phoenix are one bucket away from tying this game up. And that's what you have to do, though. You have to keep blocking this team out. They're crashing the glass. Even the point guard that time was on the glass. Ten offensive rebounds here for the Phoenix. Something that has kept him in this game. Ramsey for the mid-range, under pressure, right in the face of Skylar White, and he goes over the sky to put them back up by four. Well, that's confidence from Ramsey. He just missed the last one, the mid-range pull up off the pick and roll, but he's not afraid to take the next one, and he knocks that one down. Sheffield just hanging in there, trying to hold on to the lead. Maceo Jack with a little push off. He responds. Good defense by Dribble out of Coy, but not enough to stop Maceo Jack. Well, Maceo knows he had the quickness advantage there and took him hard left with the pullback. He's had a good game, Jack. He's let the game come to him. And like I said, he can get him more touches. Maybe he could be even more productive. Sheffield just need to keep on piling on the pressure. So far, it's been the moment here of Deville Ramsey in the fourth quarter, keeping this team in the lead. Foul is going to be called against Maceo Jack, and again, had his hands up. Have to see the replay of that one, coach. Well, no, the foul, excuse me, it's not on. It's on, my apologies, it's actually against LaQuincy Rideau. No, Rideau, four fouls in the first game. You know, he gambles a little on defense, gets steals. Got to be careful. Not shoot, not in the shooting yet, so not a terrible foul. Well, turning it over. Well, they come back up with it. Time wanted down here on the shot clock. Well, that's going to be a traveling violation. Again, a bit of a panic button there push by Drupal Anacoya. And fatigue certainly uh, coming into play now for the Sharks. They certainly look like a team that is, you know, struggling to get their legs here late in the game. But they're going to have to do it on the defensive end. Anacoya been out there a lot of minutes. We haven't seen Bennett Cook in a while. Well, you know, it's uh, two minutes left in the game now. You got to suck it up and try to finish the job off. Well, interesting thing you said there about Bennett Cook. I mean, he does have a slight little injury there coming from his nasal. But, you know, you know, for the position that he plays, it's tough to play against a Phoenix team, as we mentioned. Very quick, like to play on the perimeter. And at the moment, they are now one possession away from tying this game up or potentially taking the lead. And pick and pop coming with White here. Switched it. Trying to find the mismatch. Now we're under 10 here. Oh, again, had the opening, but fumbles it out of bounds. And that will be possession back to the Sharks. And look at the response for Coach Ben Thomas. Well, when you get the switch to the five man, you have to take him if you're the point guard. Got to take him off the dribble. A little late in the decision, then fumbled it out of bounds. But you got to can't hang your head for long. Got to get back now, play defense. You've done a good job in this half of holding this team down. You know, a few more solid defensive possessions. Well, it's almost a marathon here for the Phoenix. They get closer and closer to tying the game up. But Sheffield, you almost feel like at some point they just keep pulling away from them. Chester here only committed one foul. So they do have fouls to give. 
that won't put them on the foul line if it's not a shooting foul. Adequa now. Looking to isolate against Skylar White. White now, no foul called. They say it came off well. Ben Thomas and Fury, because if no foul was called, that might have come off of Jubal Adekoya. Be careful now. You don't want to get a technical foul on this point. Got to keep your composure. Five on the shot clock. Lock up on the out-of-bounds defense. Five seconds watch, left here on the shot clock. Watch Pipkins here. With that staggered screen here for Pipkins to see the way he goes. Cheshire do have fouls to get, but you no, know, due to the timing of the game, being 123 to go. Well, Coach Thomas a little disappointed. They gave him, it looks like they're giving Sheffield a timeout, but the ball was in the hands of the Sheffield player. And that's what he's disappointed in. Well, Coach Lyons wanted to call the timeout here. He knows what a big play this is. You know, draw up something from out of bounds. But um, yeah, it didn't, didn't look like, he looked like they already had the ball in their hands. So usually that, that play goes on without the timeout. Well, no doubt, of course, you can see the difference in experience. Now, you know, credit to both these two coaches. I mean, they've both won silverware here in the British Basel League. You know, even though his team have time and time again, they've been losing the league, he has kept his composure. Ben Thomas, you're one possession away. You just need to calm down right now because your energy does rub off on the players. Yeah, he's fine. He's in the huddle now. And let's see. You got to talk about defense. Let's see what he draws up here. Every team will have some sort of special play under five and under. Uh, you know, you don't have a lot of time here when you inbound the ball. So you would expect some kind of quick hitter. And if you're Cheshire over there, you can't mess up a switch here. You have to be, you know, locked into your man. You don't want to slip to the basket for an easy deuce. Now, if Cheshire ought to commit a foul on the ground, it won't send the shots to the free throw line. It'll only be their second team foul. But as you said, it will refresh the 14 shot clock and will give possession back to the shots. So defensive discipline needs to be the focal point here for the Cheshire Phoenix. Let's see the, the, the alignment here. Looks similar to before here. Rotino away from the ball. Pipkins might have a couple screens here. Now they go to Ram Ramsey off the screen. Ramsey on the baseline, doesn't get it. White secures the rebound. Foul has been committed. It's going to be the 13th foul against the Sharks. Only one more to give here in the fourth quarter. 1.19 to go. And that was a play for Ramsey. Pipkins with the fake back door. He got a good look. Ramsey looks like he wanted the foul. And White does a good job of securing that ball with all the pressure all over him. This is a big spot in the game here. A lot of delay. Give Cheshire an opportunity to talk about what they want to do on the offensive end. Cheshire now have won this quarter 17 to 12. Only 12 points coming from the Sharks. They did win the third quarter as well, 17 to 15. But now is going to be the monumental moment. Can they tie the game? Well, they almost throw it away. And again, I mean, that's going to infuriate you as a coach if you see your team's inability to get the ball inbound. Yeah, you get, they got lucky there. They got to get it back now. Matino did a good job here denying Ray. And now White's going to come up to help. Brings everybody up. Cheshire now needs something big here. Just over a minute to go in the fourth quarter. Trailer by two points. Twice they've trailed by 16. But can they finally level this game up? Can they potentially take the lead? Under 10 here on the shot clock. Got to get something going. Rudeau now splits the defense. Kicks out, pump fakes, makes contact, tough shot. But again, another poor offense there by the Phoenix. Took too long to get into it. You got to go earlier. You know, if you don't have something, you got to go earlier so you can spread them out. Now they need another defensive stop. Shocks looking to close this game out here. Anything will make this a two possession game. Coming off two bull screens. Kicks out Rotino. Ramsey down the middle. Finds Cisse. Cisse goes up. Cisse, no foul called yet again. But a foul has been called, so... And I think Ben Thomas is saying to the officials, 24-second violation should have been called. Mm, that's going to be interesting to see there. I thought he got fouled on the first play. Jabril Adekoya underneath the basket. And this is a big call in this game, because it'll be two free throws. See, Ramsey makes a nice pass. That's clean, I think, there. That's a foul in my mind. Yeah, I think the second one was a foul. The question is, was it before the shot clock buzzer went off? Well, it looks like Adekoya will go to the free throw line. 
This will be a big moment for him. Make both of these. Potentially, they have the cushion. Make only one. It's going to be a three-point ball game. 33 minutes on the board today for Adekoya. Seven points, eight rebounds, four assists. Solid free throw shooter. What I found with Jabril is, though, he's a better free throw shooter in the big moments. He's a guy that doesn't shy away from that. You expect him to put two on the board here. Well, they're going to call it on the floor, it looks like. Ooh, interesting. Not shooting. That's a strange call there. 11 seconds difference between game and shot clock. So defensively, Cheshire can go without fouling right away. Ramsey coming off the screen. Ramsey going to the bucket. Teardrop puts it up at oh. Reggie time. Now, possession arrow. Who's it going in favor of? That's a question. It, Sheffield, I think it's Sheffield. And that is a big, big play there. Bring the jump ball back. Well, coach, if that is the case, that possession might be what potentially wins this for the yeah. Sharks because, as you mentioned, goes to a jump ball, Sharks will get it back. So now the Phoenix have no choice but to foul, I believe. Uh, coach, you've got to ask you, this has been a phenomenal game, but who is your player of the game? Well, I think when you're looking at Sheffield, it was Pipkins. His points were huge for them in this game. I think his ability to put those points up on the board for a team that has struggled to score, really, in the second half. But those points from him were huge to give them the lead that they've had most of the game. Sharks just need to get this one in bounds. Cheshire, at the moment, needs to commit three fouls before sending Sheffield wow. to the free throw line. Wow. And there's only 12.7 seconds left, but now we're going to have a timeout as these two teams want to talk it over. But, you know, if you're a team alliance, what do you send to your players in this timeout? We got to get the ball in. That's a huge problem here now. It, you know, you got to get that ball in bounds, and you can't get caught in a corner where you're in a trap situation. But once you get the ball in, you don't have to do anything. They'll probably foul you right away. You know, you got to be strong with the ball. Don't try to make any crazy passes or anything where a steal could happen because they will have to foul you eventually. So it's about getting that ball in bounds, you know. Usually when you get the ball in bounds to get fouled, usually it's from the side out of bounds late in the game. So this is unique for a coach to draw something up from the end line to try to get the ball in bounds. Now, of course, there's always the fear that, you know, you don't want to commit the foul before the foul does get inbound because, or commit it, excuse me, because then you're looking at a potential on sports of like. So defensive disciplines needs to be the key focal point for the Cheshire Phoenix. Well, they got to come up with a steal here. I think they can't allow them to just keep throwing the ball inbounds. Clock will come off, so they're going to go for a steal. They'll be aggressive. It'll be interesting to see if they take the guy, if they put the guy on the ball who's taking the ball out of bounds, or they play five on four to try to stop the ball from getting in. Now, let's I'd be interesting to see what kind of alignment the Sharks have here. And like I said, it's a unique situation just to get the ball inbounds from there. It looks like White is going to be on top of the ball here to make it tough for him to see. Point guard taking it out. Best passer, probably. Well, again, Cheshire, as you mentioned, need to get that still if they can. Oh. Now, wide open at a Koya. And again, where was the help side defense? Coach, you might need to go look in the loss and foul for that one. Well, that time here was simple. They switched and nobody recovered to add a Koya. It was an easy play to get the ball in bounds. Are you surprised, I think, of how wide open he was? Watch here. Ray switches, but Jack doesn't. If Ray's going to switch out there, then Jack's going to have to stay. You know, that's communication coming out of the timeout. And that's one that they will feel really bad about because too easy at that point to give up that bucket. But they got an opportunity here coming out of the timeout. Still 12 seconds left. They'll get the ball all the way up the floor to draw something up, get a quick bucket, and then try to get a turnover or foul. Yeah, I was just about to say as well, if they are able to get the steal, but, you know, if they can't, excuse me, and commit enough fouls to send Sheffield to the free, the free throw line. Last season, the Sharks were only 62% from the charity stripe. That's one positive take. But, you know, as a professional basketball team, you cannot allow in the fourth quarter that wide open of a look and a miscommunication on defense off, off a back screen. Yeah, that's the one that'll keep you up all night. You know, that there will, uh, as a coach, it'll keep you up all night. You know, it's too easy in that situation. And they almost probably feel hard done by two, by the ball getting stuck on the basket. You know, if that ball does get stuck there they get the ball going the other way trying to win but you got to regain composure now still got a good opportunity to run a nice play to get a bucket and still enough time to get this job done well if you watch Cheshire you need to go whatever you get 
need to go for whatever is best, but you know, a three-pointer would be ideal. Getting the ball inbound. Well, they go for the three. Three is up. Three is no good. Sheffield come up with it. And Sharks fans, the blood is in the water, but they can smell their first victory of this season's British Basketball League coming up. Well, that was a play they ran out of timeout for Jack. A fake handoff and quick three. He got a decent look, and he got it quickly. You know, you can't be too selective in that situation. But unfortunately for Phoenix, they couldn't knock it down. I think Sheffield will call timeout here. It's a good timeout call to bring the ball up the floor. You don't want the ball in the backcourt now because a turnover could lead to a quick deuce. If you turn it over in the front court, it'll take a long time. Here's the fake handoff, good switch. You know, that's one team that was smart here on the timeout on the switch. They were right on point with that. Cheshire, obviously we talked about it on the out of bounds play, Warren, and that's important late in games to be on the same page defensively. Yeah, one worrying thing I want to identify with Cheshire's defense, Sheffield have taken 50 field goal attempts with inside the rainbow tonight. I mean, as opposed to 37 from the Phoenix. But, you know, the Phoenix like to take a lot of three-pointers. But having said that, Sheffield have taken more three-pointers than their counterparts tonight. That's also incredible. Yeah, well, Phoenix, you know, certainly wasn't the same type of game they had last week. You know, they're 9 for 25 from three. But when you look at the second-chance points on the night, they have 13 of them, and points off turnovers, only four. So I think that's the difference in the game. The points off turnovers to them, only four. And now you see Sheffield bring it up the floor. It's important here for Allen not to throw it towards the backcourt. you got to be careful, because that is a way for an easy deuce. Expect Cheshire to try to get the five-second call here, if not foul right away. Well, they got to get the ball inbound. Ramsey gets it right away. He's fouled, but more fouls must be given with 5.4 seconds left. One more now, I think. One more foul. I think this one will put him to the line. Is that accurate? I think it's two more, actually. Is it two more? Yeah, yeah three, third, third, third team foul, excuse me. No, I think it's the fourth. They had that one down the at the yeah, other correct. end. Yep. Yep. So I think now, once it gets in, you will send him to the line. But the problem for the Phoenix is simple now, is that, you know, it's a two-possession game. So, um, you know, they're running out of opportunities here. I think Sheffield should be able to easily clean this up and, and finish the job. Well, Nichols gets this one inbound. The foul has been committed. I think there was a bit of a delay there because... They're waiting for the foul, but I think the official assumed they were going to let the ball dribble out. But Nichols will go to the free throw line for two final shots here for the charity stripe. Yeah, it took a little long time to get that foul called. You wanted that right away, and I think they thought. And you see White talking to the officials. He, he, they think they thought they fouled him, but now he's pretty much academic here as Kipper goes to the line. And give Kipper credit. You know, just arrived on the court in a big moment. Gave him some good minutes today. I have him for 13 at this point chance to give himself 15 on the night as he misses the free throw but uh, certainly got some really good minutes out of him it's been very important in this w well big turnaround for the sheffield shocks this game many thought coming in that cheshire would be the favorites you know credit to this team they built the lead twice and they've hung on coach but at the end of this one the sheffield shocks they pick up their first victory of the british basketball League season 75 to 70 against the cheshire phoenix coach Job done here for a team alliance. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, a little tight here in the second half. You can see the sweat coming off him a bit, but it sure feels good now to get that first W this season. Well, they went on the road against the Newcastle Eagles, fell short in that one. You know, defensively, we got to pay more homage to him. He did his homework. His game plan was to prevent Cheshire from having a hot night for the perimeter. Well, he had an opportunity to look at last week, and I think he took advantage of that by the way he defended. You know, Cheshire last week crashing the glass all the time, hitting the threes, forcing turnovers. Sheffield did a really good job to not allow him to get into that type of game. What's well, these kind of victories on the road? You know, they're not emphatic victories, but you know, you got to dig deep collectively as a team and try to find something within to hold on. And that's what they've done. And now they got to build off this as they look to head home to some of their new fixtures. Yeah, you know, no doubt. You know, starting on the road, obviously, you have a bunch of road games early. So, you know, getting some wins on the road is good. But, you know, they'll feel good about this. I thought they did a really good job on defense. Offensively, second half struggled, but they did enough early to get the W. Well, the last time they ever won a piece of silverware here in the British Basketball League was back in 2016. I do apologize for bringing up these That's sort okay. of haunted memories for you. But, you know, this is a team, as we mentioned, historically they've been one of the best teams in this league since joining in 1994. And why not now? 
Why not Sheffield? But again, they've got to find a way together to get them back to the glory days. Well, the defense is going to be there for them. You know that. And they take care of the ball most of the time. Is it, Can they get enough offense from this team going forward? But certainly we'll have a lot to build on on this game. And I think um, when you look at their team, they're filled with a lot of veterans who understand what it takes to get it done in this league. Yeah, I still want to go back to that game against the Newcastle Eagles because I think both of you and I were very surprised to see in that game that they took 33 pointers and only made six. Whereas tonight, I mean, they shot the ball fabulously, but they only took 13 three pointers, but making nine of them. Yeah, I mean, they got good looks inside. I think they played more of an inside out game today. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to meet the player of the game, Pipkins, as we get his thoughts on this one. Jalen, great game from you. You had it going early. You must have felt good out there. Man, uh, I didn't have a, a good taste in my mouth last game. I feel like last game we should have. I feel like last game we should have should have came out with that win. And so I just wanted to come out here, be aggressive on both ends of the court, and uh, you know try to get the win. And we did that, so I'm happy. Yeah, what did you find in yourself, the confidence to really be aggressive, but also you set a new milestone, the most ever points you've scored for the Sheffield Sharks. Man, I, it's it's really a simple simple formula. I put in the work, you know what I mean. I do the unrequired. And uh, I mean, my, my teammates give me the confidence, and I try to do the same for them. And so, like, it, it just works out like that. Jay, you did a good job on defense today. What was the plan going into the game? You saw that Cheshire Phoenix team last week put up 110 points on the board. What was the plan going in this week to slow them down? Man, we, res we respect everybody. Uh, and of course, we watched that game. We watched the film on that game. Uh, we wanted to, you know, shut down. Skyler White had a, had a big game last game. We wanted to, you know, cut his water off, you know, do our best, the best we can. And uh, I feel like we. We came out here and did what Coach had, had the, the plan for us to do, so. Well, Jalen, we just want to say thank you, congratulations, but also good luck in your next game against the Surrey Scorchers. Thank you, thank you. Well, there is Jalen Pipkins, but now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at the live stats here from this game. The Sheffield Sharks picking up their first victory in the British Basketball League. And Coach, run us through these stats. What a big win it was for the Sharks. Yeah, he did a great job of scoring early and then defending late. You know, you talked about last week how they gave up 39 free throws. Well, only 15 given up today. You know, did a good job with taking care of the ball as well. You saw last week when Cheshire gets the turnovers, they can score only nine turnovers today from the Sharks. A really solid solid win on the road. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and meet the winning coach at Team Alliance from the Sheffield Sharks to get his thoughts on his first victory this season. Well, Tiba, congratulations. I got to tell you, first of all, you're making me feel very envious. You are wearing some serious swag in the bag right now. But let's talk <laughs> about your victory. What does it mean to you and your players to get this victory on the road? Well, you know, as Rob knows, getting that first one, getting the monkey off your back is really big in the season just because you, you're all new and you're trying to figure things out. So winning ugly is, uh, is a positive this time of year. Well, you, saw the, you saw the game last week, I'm sure, Coach Lyons, and you saw how Cheshire put the big numbers on the board. And what was the plan today defensively? What was important for you guys going into this game? We really wanted to, to disrupt the passing lanes, uh, make it hard for them to catch in the three-point line, make them push them out to half court. And then rebounding was key. We know from your game, uh, it wasn't a three so much. It was the offensive rebounding that killed y'all. If you guys would have got some of those, it would have been a much different game for you. A team, you know, you're going up against the Surrey Scorchers next week, a team that, you know, you really like playing against. But what is going to be the big game plan for your team moving forward after this victory? I really need to look at film. I don't like a lot of things I saw just, just as far as uh, cohesion-wise. Um, we didn't run our sets with purpose sometimes. And defensively, that's some major breakdowns that we work on that we just got to get uh, comfortable with. Now, how nice, would, Coach, how nice was it to have Kipper back in the lineup today? You know, it looked like he never never left. It gave you some, you know, in a low-scoring game. I think his points were really important today for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tremendous punch for us coming off the bench. Um, had, you know, comes in with the system. He knows what we want, knows how to play defensively. Probably a little bit of rust from the summertime. He hasn't really played or practiced that much. But, um, yeah, that's going to be key for us to have that con continuity back and someone that can score and play against these uh, athletic guards they have. And most of the guards in the league are, are quite athletic, so we need those athletic fours on our team. Coach, just want to say thank you for talking with us, but also congratulations on your victory and all the best next week in your next game. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we now move into the story of the A good job defensively, but here you see that man, the player of the game, Pipkins getting to the basket to score. And here you see with Allen, you know, on the pick and roll, but the, they kept it alive. And Allen did a lot of nice things out there. He's not really aggressive offensively, but did a nice thing there to keep it alive. And here you see Pipkins again, knocking down the three, which will make those Sheffield fans happy. 
Well, again, it's just a story of character. Sheffield building big leads in the first half. At times, they were pegged back by the Phoenix, but character was shown. This team collectively held on to their lead for the victory. They did, and I thought that defensively, they did a pretty good job on their, sh on their switches, but I thought Ray had another good game tonight. He is really a matchup problem. He had 17 points, nine rebounds, five assists for him. And I, there, Cheshire came back. I thought the fatigue factor was there for Sheffield. They thought they got tired, like a lot of teams do on the road, but held off, held their nerve. And I thought Ramsey's confidence in taking the shot when he needed it was important for them today. Cheshire in front of the home crowd, of course, expecting big things after that big victory, as you saw last week. But you know, you can't change the DNA of a team. But Cheshire, they need to find other ways to score than other just three-point shooting. Well, they will. I think it's early in the season. And obviously, you know, that scouting report was there for them after game one. So they'll adjust. They have some pretty tough players. And one of them is Macy O'Jack, who can shoot from the perimeter. But he also has the strength to get to the basket. And then, you know, with White firing on the perimeter, a lot of times that big guy is not in there. And Aaron Ray with the big play there to find Christian. And the crowd was up. They thought they had a chance to, to have this comeback. Well, no doubt, of course, the Cheshire Phoenix, a team with a lot of rich history and tradition, their fan base, I mean, it's just like any other fan base here in the league, they are just a terrific group of fans that come in week in, week out. And that was the dying moments of the game in which Adekoya basically said good night to everybody here at the Cheshire Oaks Arena. But ladies and gentlemen, now, as we're gonna move on and take a look at some of the other results here from this week and a double victory coming from the Lions against Caledonia Gladiators and of course against the Manchester Giants. You know, a big victory as we mentioned for your team coming from behind to beat the Plymouth City Patriots. Oh yeah, and down at halftime, I thought our guys did a really good job in the second half of playing tough defense and coming up with the big buckets in the fourth quarter. Well, our colleague Drew Laska said that you're gonna have gray hairs by the end of the season, but Drew, I think it's time for you to remember who this man is <laughs> as he led his team to victory, but also a very big victory for Newcastle going 2-0 and here are some of the upcoming fixtures. The game of the week will be on Sky Sports as the London Lions will be hosting the Bristol Flyers. But coach, I'm right next to you. I'm looking forward. Can you go back-to-back -back victories in your third game? Well, we hope so. It certainly will be a tough challenge. Uh, we'll have a full week of practice. Still have a lot to work on. Also a lot of conditioning this week so you know, hopefully we'll be ready to go to play a tough Bristol team on Saturday night. Well, the Plymouth City Patriots will be hosting the newly formed Manchester Giants, while the Newcastle Eagles will look to go 3-0 as they host the Cheshire Phoenix. That's on Friday, September the 29th. Surrey Scorchers, another team in desperate need of a first victory. They'll take on the Sharks. It's exciting times here in the British Basketball League. An exciting time to watch, too. All the games able to watch, and I think it's going to be an exciting season. A lot of teams. I mean, London obviously showed what they have so far. They're going to be tough to beat, but I think there's a lot of teams that are comparable in this league, so should be great matchups every night. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable victory here for the Sheffield Sharks. We would like to say thank you for joining us here in the British Basketball League. I'm Josh Bett. He is Rob Padanostra. But for now, it's good night, and we'll see you next week.